While every other Rodecaster video is going to talk about the setup, the unboxing, how much they love or hate the auto switching capabilities, this is not that kind of video. I'm going to show you my specific use cases for the Rodecaster video using scenes. Yes, the power of scenes and how powerful of a tool this actually can be. Specifically in my case, when producing webinars or virtual interviews and pairing it with Zoom. Now stick with me until the end and I'm gonna reveal a secret method to get broadcast quality video from Zoom that most live streamers and producers don't even know about. Hey everyone, I'm Mark. And for the past five years, I've been producing weekly professional webinars for a long-standing client of mine. I've used pretty much every solution out there that I'm aware of from software solutions like Wirecast to hardware solutions like the ATEM uh, Mini, the ATEM Extreme, combining mix effect with the ATEM in order to have separate control for different scenes to StreamYard. I've always been searching for that perfect balance between quality and reliability. When I saw that Rode had released the Rodecaster video, I tried to order it immediately, but there was just one problem. B&H Photo was in New York and they were the only retailer carrying it. They probably still are. And they were closed for the week for their holiday. So while I waited, I dove into every YouTube video I could find to learn as much as I could about this device. Now, what really caught my eye wasn't what everyone else was talking about. While other creators focused on the auto switching features, I saw something different. The ability to create and save custom scenes. For someone like me who produces professional virtual interviews and webinars, this is a game changer. Let me tell you why. My clients have some very specific needs. They need their webinars live stream at the highest possible quality. They need their presenters to have a simple familiar experience, which means using Zoom. And then we have our own unique way of running these events from running countdown timers in the beginning, rotating slide decks, to the presentation layouts and then outro sequences. So I've tried many solutions out there to try and make this happen. Now I own several ATM switches and with the ATM, you're limited to just one super source scene, unless you want to start messing around with the macros, of course. However, if you do that, you can't really preview them like you can with this device. Now, Wirecast works great. It's not perfect, but it's been my go-to for many years. And while third-party apps like MixEffect offer multiple pre-made scenes and direct control from an app, I ran into my own set of issues with that. And in my line of work, every event needs to be flawless. Let's talk about the Rodecaster video. It's a video switcher. Yes, wow, a video switcher. It has four HDMI inputs. I wish it had more and I can't wait for version two or an extreme or a pro model that doubles that from four to eight, kind of like the ATEM Mini Extreme. But what makes this device special is not necessarily its switching capabilities. Yes, it's great at that. Rather, to me, it's the scene management. Right out of the box, you can build seven custom scenes, save them from letters A through G directly on the switcher, preview them in real time, and then switch between them instantly. No programming macros, no third-party software, no connection issues, no complications. But here's what surprised me even more. When I first got the unit, I connected it to my Rodecaster Pro 2 and everything just worked seamlessly. But after playing with the software for a while, I realized something. I didn't need the Rodecaster Pro 2 anymore. The Rodecaster video handles everything I need. I can stream music to it via Bluetooth for my intros and outros. I can power my Shure SM7B microphone with Rode's excellent audio quality and drivers. And it even lets me route my audio so that I can talk to the presenters behind the scenes without going into the live mix. So I packed up my Rodecaster Pro 2 and it's sitting on my shelf right now. But here's where it gets interesting. I needed a way to get multiple zoom windows into the Rodecaster video. Sure, I could use a separate laptop for each presenter, pin that presenter to the screen and output that directly to the switcher. But when you're dealing with three or four presenters plus a screen share, that's just not affordable nor practical. So the solution came from an unlikely place, a Blackmagic Design Decklink card that had been sitting up there on my shelf collecting dust for quite some time. It has four SDI outputs, which when converted to HDMI, perfectly match the Rodecaster's inputs. But the real magic happens when you pair this with Zoom ISO. Okay. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. Zoom ISO is a program that lets you route 
individual zoom windows directly to the deck link outputs. Okay, think of it like this. You're taking each person's zoom window and sending them to its own dedicated HDMI input into the Rodecaster video. Now, I can position everyone exactly where they need to be before we even go live. While my intro slides are rotating, the background music's playing through Bluetooth, I can set up the perfect scenes one by one for when we switch to them in the webinar. But here's where I hit one snag. Even with this professional setup, my zoom quality was stuck at 360p. That's when I discovered something interesting. And I actually didn't even realize this until I had the Zoom ISO account. But I had a pro Zoom account and I emailed Zoom support requesting that they need to improve my quality to 1080p, thinking it was a decent request. Within about a day, they upgraded me to 720p. And let me tell you, the difference was night and day. Quality was amazing. But this is not 2010 and I wasn't satisfied and I wanted the full 1080p experience. And this is when I discovered a secret that I mentioned at the start. Zoom only offers 1080p if you have an enterprise account. Now this account costs thousands annually, which wasn't an option for me. But after some research, I found a legitimate third party Zoom enterprise provider offering Zoom enterprise licenses at a fraction of the cost. If you'd like to know more about how I did this, I'll link it in the description below. Now, you can easily get away with 720p. That's amazing quality. But, you know, 1080 is just better. So within a couple of days of signing up, I now had crystal clear 1080p quality on all my Zoom calls. Now, I should mention, to pull this off, you do need good bandwidth. And I just changed my home office's bandwidth from Spectrum's, I think it was 30 meg upload, to AT&T's Fiber which now gives me two gig up and two gig down, which is amazing. But general rule of thumb, the better the bandwidth you have, the better the quality you'll get, and you'll ensure that everything's gonna run smoothly, even with multiple 1080p video streams. Let me show you what this looks like in action. Uh, I've got a shot here of the Rodecaster video. Uh, so we've got shots coming in one, two, three, and four, and right now I have five scenes uh, already pre-made up top here. Camera one is right now is my shot of the Rodecaster video. Camera two, this is showing my multi-view. Camera three. Now this is the zoom ISO settings. Let me show you real quick. You can choose how many outputs you want. So if we had four people, you'd simply put four. If you had three, you'd put three. At the moment, I have three connections in there. So output number one, zoom ISO one. We can choose, do we want participant, active speaker, spotlight, screen share, gallery, unique speaker. So you have all these options right here within Zoom ISO, which is excellent. I'm gonna keep it as participant, and then you can come down here, see who all is logged into the meeting, and then click accordingly uh, who you'd like to see. You can see the resolution that you want to share, and as you can see over here, which is amazing, look, we're getting 1920 by 1080p. Now, what's neat about this is right now, my camera one, this quality that you're seeing right now, this is actually coming directly through Zoom. I have the road camera here set up uh, to another laptop behind me. And this is an active participant road camera coming in at 1080p back to Zoom. So you look at the quality right there, you can see it's, it's amazing for what it actually is doing. Okay, and you can have here, I'm actually sharing this window you're seeing right now, the Zoom ISO settings window. This is the active screen share, what we're actually seeing right now. So as presenters are sharing their screen, this can come up as another input. And all the audio is simply just gonna be routed straight through into the mixer here, where you'll be able to see all the audio coming through live via Zoom. Let me show you my setup real quick, just to give you an idea. Let's say we have one, two, three, and four. These are my full screen shots. We have one, two, three, and four is the screen share. Now, we have scene A I've pre-built here. I've already put some graphics in the top where we have uh, my shot on the left and then a shot of camera two on the right. Output two, this is my third shot. So we've cropped in each side and there's a, uh, camera A, B, and C in there. C, now this is a four person shot. It's amazing. You have uh, four people already set up, either four people on Zoom or you can have three with a screen share. 
Then we have the picture by picture where we have the presenter on the left hand side and the screen share on the right hand side. And then if presenter two or camera two wants to go ahead and give their presentation, they can be on the left and then presentation can be on the right as well. So you can see the power of this is having all of this pre-made and set up in there right now. You can preview them live. You can see on the screen here, it says scene A, B, C, D, E. You can preview them live, make sure they're ready to go. And then you just hit them and it just works. So there's my quick run through of the Roadcaster video. The beauty is that once these scenes are all set up, switching between them is as simple as pressing a button. Now, what I love about the setup is how it combines simplicity with my professional quality. My presenters just hop on Zoom like they always have. But on my end, I now have complete control over the production value from the scene composition to the crystal clear video quality. Now you might be thinking, isn't there an easier way to make this happen? Yeah, sure. There are plenty of all-in-one solutions. Some people like StreamYard, others like Riverside FM, uh, they don't do all the functions that I need them to do. But when you do need the specific control, direct streaming capabilities, and the broadcast level quality, this setup really shines. If you'd like to see more about how I exactly set this up, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see exactly how I used to handle this with Wirecast, check it out in my previous video. I'll link it in the description. And I'm curious, what's your current setup for managing multiple presenters and live streams? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're considering the Roadcaster video for your productions, make sure to subscribe. I'll be sharing more advanced tips and workflows in the upcoming videos. And hey, if you found the Zoom Enterprise license tip helpful, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. See you in the next one.